Let's take a look at the difference between blowback pistols and recoil operated or locked breech pistols. Most handgun shooters seem to know that theoretically there is a difference, but they might be kind of fuzzy on the details. So I'm gonna try and help clear that up. Now, full disclosure, I took astronomy as my science credit because they said there would be no math. So I apologize in advance to all of you physics and engineering people if I don't get all of the terminology quite right. I'm gonna try and explain this as best as possible, but it's gonna be in layman's terms because that's what helped me understand it. So basically we are looking at what is happening in that very brief instant after the round discharges when the slide moves back to the rear and then forward again. There have been dozens of different types of designs over the years to make a pistol do this, but probably 99% of semi-automatic pistols today are either blowback designs or recoil operated. With handguns, Blowback is usually synonymous with a specific type called straight blowback or simple blowback. Like all modern firearms, the cycle starts when a firing pin hits the primer, which ignites the repellent or powder inside the cartridge case. That creates hot gases that start expanding and dramatically raise the pressure inside the case. That pressure forces the bullet out of the case and down the barrel. And that pressure is going in all directions, so it's gonna take the path of least resistance. So it's also pushing against the case, and that is going to force the slide to open, and the case is gonna eject from the gun. And now this spring is fully compressed, and it can't go any further, and so the spring is gonna make the slide start to move forward. It'll pick up a fresh round from the magazine, and then it'll come to rest again in the forward position. Now the challenge, for anyone designing a semi-automatic pistol is that the slide must not be allowed to open too far until the bullet is all the way out of the barrel. And those hot gases vent out of the barrel and the pressure inside the barrel is going to drop. While the bullet is still in there, the pressure is very high. If the slide were to open while the pressure is still high, the wall of the case is gonna be exposed. And it's no longer gonna be supported by the chamber. That could cause the case to rupture and that's not gonna be good for the guy holding the gun. So to prevent that from happening, in a straight blowback gun, the slide is simply held in place by its own mass and the tension of the recoil spring. That provides enough resistance for the slide to stay in place just long enough for the bullet to exit the barrel and drop the pressure to a safe level. And that's why most blowback pistols are chambered for small caliber, low pressure cartridges like 380, 32, and 22 long rifle. In order for a blowback gun to work with higher pressure cartridges like 9, 40, or 45, the slide would have to be massive. High Point is one of the only companies to actually do this, and that's why their guns look and feel so awkward. They are blowback pistols chambered for high pressure calibers. This is a more typical caliber for a straight blowback gun. It's a CZ Model 83 chambered in 380 ACP. And if I pop the slide off, you can see the barrel is fixed to the frame and the recoil spring just slips around it like that. This is a style of blowback pistol first pioneered by John Browning with the FN Model 1910. Not all blowback guns work this way, but a lot of them do, like the Walther PP series and the Russian Makarov. Here we've got a Beretta Model 81 Cheetah chambered in 32 ACP. It's also a blowback pistol, and just like the CZ, the barrel stays in place when the slide moves, but if I take this one apart, you can see that the barrel is not attached to the frame and the recoil spring is around this guide rod here that sits below the barrel. So they're both straight blowback designs even though they've got some differences in how they work. Most pistols made today are short recoil operated, also called locked breech pistols. These guns can more easily handle higher pressure cartridges because when the slide starts moving to the rear, the barrel moves with it. The two are locked together. For this Smith & Wesson shield, the locking lug is in this shelf on top of the barrel and it locks into the ejection port on the slide. But they only stay together for the first couple of millimeters. We just need a little extra time for that bullet to exit the barrel and for the pressure to drop. Then when the barrel reaches a certain point, it separates from the slide. In this case, it tilts down and it stops moving to the rear while the slide continues on so the case can eject. 
Here is some ultra slow motion footage of this process that we recorded a few years ago. Going frame by frame, the trigger has been pulled, but we can't see anything happening yet. And now the bullet has left the case, but it's still in the barrel and the slide has just barely started to move. We can't see the case yet because the barrel is moving with the slide. Now in the next frame, the bullet is out of the barrel and the barrel and slide are still locked. After one more frame, the barrel has dropped down to separate from the slide so the case can eject. The most common type of recoil operated pistols today by far are the tilting barrel style, which is another John Browning invention. It was popularized by the Colt 1911 and now you find them everywhere. You can always identify these guns because when the slide is locked open, the barrel will be tilted at a slight angle and it'll rattle around a little bit because it's not locked into the slide. Beretta is among the few companies currently making non-Browning style recoil operated pistols. The 92 series guns use a locking block to control the movement of the barrel rather than a tilting action. And the Beretta PX4 has a rotating barrel design. Last week, I mentioned that recoil operated guns usually have less felt recoil than blowback guns of the same size and caliber. And that tends to be true even when the blowback gun is much heavier. A lot of different factors contribute to felt recoil, but my guess is that recoil operated guns transfer the recoil force to the shooter's hand over a longer period of time. The slide moves a little bit slower and that makes it easier to control. It feels more like a slow push than a quick snap, at least relative to a blowback gun of the same caliber. These days, nearly all new pistol designs use a short recoil action, even for smaller calibers. I actually can't think of any centerfire handgun designs from this century that use a straight blowback action. Now, I'm sure there are one or two that I'm forgetting about, but suffice it to say, the industry is leaning heavily in the direction of recoil operated locked breech pistols. If you found this at all helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would just mash that like button below, subscribe to our channel, or leave us a nice comment. Or better yet, the next time you need ammo, get it from us with lightning fast shipping at luckygunner.com.